Hello, everybody. Welcome to the table. Today, we're going to take a look at a, a new knife from Monterey Bay Knives. And so this right here is a slip joint folder they just released recently. So their, their moniker for this knife as of this video is called the Clip Point Slip Joint. So I don't know if they're going to give it a more official name, but of course, the name fits because of this very pronounced clip point blade on the knife. And so what really drew me to this knife is the fact that it is a traditional slip joint knife. And it is, of course, made with modern materials. And so this particular knife, uh, I just wanted to buy it and give you all kind of a sneak peek of what's coming. So this right here, our slip joint from Monterey Bay Knives. Let's take a quick look at the specs on this knife. So the overall length, let's check that out. So we are looking at about six and a half inches of overall length. And uh, in terms of blade length right there, you can see we're a little bit, um, in terms of cutting edge, about two, 2.6 inches long. And if you're measuring just from tip to bolster, it looks like we're just uh, about two and seven eighths, just a hair under three inches long. And so it sounds kind of small spec wise. In hand though, it actually is fairly filling. Um, we have this nice little groove in the handle. And at least for my hand, my finger fits there pretty well. And so that bolster right there, we can just see the cutouts for it. Uh, the bolsters on this knife are titanium. We can see the scales here. This is a black canvas micarta. Everything seems very flush, very smooth, which is kind of nice. And uh, again, let's check out the blade while closed. You can see the back spring is totally flush and smooth. Very nice. Good sign of quality there. And um, when the blade is in the half stop position, you can see the back spring is still flush, which is awesome. And then, of course, same thing when fully opened. So nice and smooth. You can check out the interior of the blade. Let me get the light in there. You can see it's nice and clean on the interior. So that's always a sign of quality with slip joint knives, especially foreign produced ones. If they're clean on the inside, it generally means it's going to be good build quality overall. Um, on the bolster here, it's kind of a unique thing. We can see there's an actual screw accessible to the user. And so most uh, slip joint knives I have with bolsters, they generally, you know, sand those down, polish it out so it looks perfectly smooth. So I'm wondering if there's a reason why we have some adjustability for the user. Uh, maybe just so the knife could be disassembled. Maybe. I'm not too sure about that. Um, but it is something you may notice. It's a just simple little flathead screwdriver there. Um, our scales here, our covers, are affixed with T6 Torx bits. So despite, of course, the traditional styling and design, we do have some modern fasteners on there. Again, nothing really wrong with that. Just an observation. Um, and for the, the size of the knife, uh, the weight of it is coming in, I think, at around 2.3 ounces. I just measured it a few minutes ago. So very lightweight for the size. Um, the thickness of the blade. Actually, what's kind of interesting here is um, the blade or the whole knife starts out thicker at the butt end and then it kind of tapers inward. So we can see at the bolster, it's a bit thinner than it is at the rear, which again helps with your grip on the knife. And uh, the blade itself, I love the blade. Look at the, the grinds on it. Nice satin grinds. There is a nail nick on it. And being a slip joint, you do need to manually pull it out of the handle. There's, I don't really need to use the nail nick. I can just pinch with my fingers and it comes right out. It's not an easy open, but it's also not a nail breaker. It's, it, I think they found the middle ground in which you can open this knife without too much hassle, but you're also not going to have to use the nail nick and snap off your nails in the process. Um, so I think they did good on that compromise there. And the only markings on the blade, we can see the Monterey Bay Knives logo and the blade steel marking. This is K390. And so I don't know anything about K390. I've never owned a knife with that steel, but a quick search shows us that most production knives using K390 at this point are coming from Spyderco. And uh, what's kind of interesting about K390 is that it's it's a tool steel, basically, and um, good edge retention and all that stuff, but it's also a carbon steel. It's not really a stainless steel. So as you use this knife, like any traditional knife that uses 1095, say, if you use, especially if you use this for a lot of food cutting, um, it's going to eventually get a nice little uh, patina on the blade. And of course, that's just a finish that naturally occurs to protect it from rust. Um, but what that means is, of course, you're going to have to take good care of this if you want to keep it in this really immaculate, shiny condition. So keeping it oiled uh, will be important, being very careful of wiping the knife down after you're using it. 
Um, and anyone who has used a traditional folder with traditional steel will be familiar with that process. But again, what kind of drew me into this one, this blade, I love clip point blades, and this is about as clippy as they get. So check out that swedge right there. So very nice. Um, the blade stock here is about 330 seconds, and then it narrows down into this tip. So very nicely done. But overall, let's make some quick comparisons. Uh, I do have a couple of other knives on the table to give you kind of an idea of the size, you know, next to other knives. So right here, this is just your standard um, cadet. Well, maybe not standard, but a Victorinox cadet with some G10 scales. So we can see it's definitely bigger than that in terms of overall length. So even though the, the Monterey Bay knives slip joint here is, it's a small knife. It doesn't feel small. And even when comparing it to bigger knives, it doesn't feel that small either. Um, this here being the Kershaw Federalist. So another modern take on a slip joint. And we can see the Federalist is a bit larger. And that's definitely by design. Um, and one more traditional, this is the Great Eastern Cutlery, number 71, the Bull Nose. So kind of like a sodbuster style knife. So let's just put these three side by side. Federalist, Monterey Bay Knives, Bull Nose. And it's pretty favorable in size comparisons to the Bull Nose. Um, and let's take us another look at the thickness of this one. Because I, I told you it tapered out. And let me kind of show you in comparison to the bull nose because these bull nose knives are known for being thick. So take a look at the butt end here of the slip joint and see how thick it is. It's about as thick as this Great Eastern Cutlery is at the butt end. But then when we switch over to the bolster end, you can see how it narrows down and it's like half the thickness. So that's kind of cool. And that's something, it's just a tiny detail. Most people might not even ever notice that. Um, but I do like the curves at the end. Honestly, it's not the right shape, but it kind of reminds me of like a coffin shape design, just with these angular curves. And of course you'll notice um, it's a slip joint. Um, there's no pocket clip. Um, there's no lanyard hole. It's fairly straightforward. It's a pocket knife. It comes with a very nicely done little leather uh, pouch, has a belt loop on it, and it actually is super tight out of the box. And it's going to be a good fit because of course with leather, you got to work it in. And so um, definitely more, uh, in my opinion, more of like a belt carry option than a pocket carry option, just with how much knife is exposed in the case. Um, but it's cool that they gave us an option for carry. And so I know some people will probably be heartbroken. There's no lanyard hole. <laughs> uh, I'm okay with that. I don't do lanyards. Um, but just like every other Monterey Bay knives, um, knife that I've purchased, it comes with the nylon pouch, the cleaning cloth, um, but really, really interesting design here. I uh, just kind of wanted to give you a first look and perspective, um, answer any questions that may arise because it is a new model. As of filming this, this is still in stock on the Monterey Bay Knives website. Um, and again, I will say, I don't think I mentioned it already, but this is foreign produced. Uh, Monterey Bay Knives is moving towards US production on some of their models, um, but this isn't one of them. Um, so again, just so you're aware, so I don't want to feel like I'm falsely advertising. And again, nothing wrong with that. It is a very high quality knife with a very interesting choice of steel. Um, and if you're a traditional fan, I think this could be right down your alley. A lot of great traditionals are coming through the pipeline right now from a lot of different companies. Um, I think right now we are, are, one of the current buzzwords, one of the current popular things in the knife world are slip joints. And so Monterey Bay Knives has gotten on top of that. And this is what we have from them. So hope you all have a knife day, everyone. If you have any questions again, drop them below. See you later.